because there's no passenger, you can do things on the vehicle that you cannot do on a passenger vehicle. We're one of the few companies, I think maybe the only company, that has actually shared how we're going to convince ourselves the thing is safe to be on the road. If we look at this technology, it's going to shape transportation for the next century. I think this is definitely already in a zero to one. Uh, we've passed the one, uh, now it's about scaling. Uh, so as Chris said, um, we already have self-driving cars on the roads. Uh, different companies have different, different services. Um, we, last year, we have the first driverless pizza delivery in Houston, uh, and it was just amazing to see customers ranging from three-year-old all the way to 80 years old uh, using a robot uh, getting their pizza from Domino's. Uh, so this is definitely happening. Uh, I think now, the industry is trying to figure out how to grow, how, how to put more vehicles on the road safely uh, and grow this as a business. You know, part of uh, what makes us at Greylock as a just amazingly delighted investor in both companies and was part of our discussions early on is that you were both very sophisticated about how you approached safety. Because obviously safety is one of the important things. I'll just invert it just so we're not always doing the same pattern. I'll start with Jay-Z and then go to Chris. Just talk a little bit about how safety is uh, fundamental to your architecture from ground up and what you're doing. Yeah, um, maybe I'll talk a bit more about uh, our uh, unique application. So because we focus on goods transportation, there's just no passenger in the vehicle. Uh, and uh, by not having a passenger vehicle, we get the opportunity to really design the vehicle from the ground up to optimize for safety for other road users. So not only we try to design a vehicle that is very neighborly, friendly, um, but also it's a bit narrower. So you have more space around you. You can um, avoid uh, accidents more easily. Um, and because there's no passenger, you can do things on the vehicle that you cannot do on a passenger vehicle. Uh, so for example, at the front end of the vehicle, we have an external facing airbag. Uh, so this is, in case there's an accident, if there's a collision, uh, the vehicle will detect that and deploy the airbag, uh, you know, 30, 40 milliseconds right before uh, the collision. Uh, so this is something that we think is going to be really, really uh, uh, good for uh, safety. Another example, uh, also because there's no passenger in the vehicle, we can decelerate the vehicle uh, much more aggressively uh, that you cannot do if you have a passenger inside. Um, so these are examples of things that we, we, we had uh, basically at the first day when we start designing the vehicle, uh, try to leverage the fact that we don't have passengers inside. And for us, we, we drive passengers and we drive giant trucks. Uh, so we're neither skinnier nor can we uh, stop as aggressively and as, you as put the airbags in the front. And, <laughs> well, I guess we could, but uh, I don't know that it helps with a 70 ton truck or whatever yes. we're driving down the road. Um, and so for us, uh, we have to think. You know, you know, even more holistically about safety, we, we embed it right in our culture. Uh, you know, if you look at our company's mission is to deliver the benefits of self-driving technology safely, quickly, and broadly, because it was, it was so important to put it in place up front. Uh, and then we're one of the few companies, I think maybe the only company, uh, that has actually shared how we're going to convince ourselves the thing is safe to be on the road. And this big structured argument, we call it a safety case uh, framework that breaks down, you know, the the technical reasons when when things are working, why they'll be safe, the um, technical reasons why when things break, we'd still be safe, and then all the organizational and process stuff that we do around that to help make sure that the, the system's constantly improving and that we have controls in place. And so we, you know, we, we really just don't think you should be doing this without doing that hard work. Uh, and it's, you know, as we look at this technology, it's going to shape transportation for the next century. Uh, and so investing in that foundational part of this so that we don't kind of foreclose the future, I think, is, is critically important.